the current state of modern society can be broken down by the types of artistic representations of heroic journeys that it creates. And what is more fitting for today's day and age, the protagonist of the story can only win by blinding him or herself or by silencing him or herself. If that's not telling for the current state of modern censorship and the insanity that's going on, I don't know what else is. So let's get started to break this down. The highest virtue that we've thus explored in this series of videos that we've gone down is something to do with taking your perception, your ability to conceptualize the world, and then sharing it with the community in a way that helps everyone out. This is the highest virtue in some respects, and it's definitely a contender for the ultimate aspiration that we should all be be oriented towards and you see it pop out in old mythologies uh on both the positive and the negative the lacking being a, a disastrous endeavor and the you know having that trait being being salvation bringing to your civilization and you see that in the story of horus with his giving of the eye to his father to revivify him you see that in the story of Christ being the embodiment of the word, right? We talk through how the words, um, you know, a, a conceptualization, a perception that's encapsulated in language and then communicated to someone else. So it's shared perception, right? And, you know, the central component to all of these things is good vision, good vision and good speaking. You, you need to be able to do those things because humans are primarily sight based and we communicate through words. So it's interesting to see a rash of movies that have flipped the role. I have this idea that through the artistic manifestations that you see in society, the collective unconscious of us all speaks to us in symbols. And I think that's why there was a big zombie focus that kind of emerged during the height of the late 60s, early 70s, Night of the Living Dead, right? Where ideological possession just started to grip the population. Then it died off and zombie movies kind of went away. And then you notice that there's been a rash of zombie movies that have come back, especially in the late 2000s, early 2010s. And, and I think, again, it's, it's about this, this manifestation that that's the symbolic representation of ideological possession. And what I've been noticing here lately with these two movies specifically, A Quiet Place and Bird Box, is that there's this new representation that the highest virtue, that the, that the heroine or the hero, right, that they, they survive the coming apocalypse by closing their eyes and shutting their mouth. And I can't help but take that as a hint that, hey, listen, y'all need to stop see, talking about what you see because that's the only way you're going to make it through this. I don't like that. It makes me really uncomfortable that that's become a virtuous manifestation that somehow, and again, I know these are horror movies and I, I get that these aren't They're not hard and fast, but somebody had to think of this idea. What if everyone couldn't speak? What if speech got you killed? What if sight, what if seeing got you killed? Well, I think we might be closer to that than we'd like to admit. I don't think that's a good thing. I think we really need to, to step back and think about that because 
right now as I talk, Twitter is purging people from talking about what they see. YouTube is purging people from talking about what they see. Facebook the same way. You know, whether or not you believe that the pandemic is real, it's kind of irrelevant in this situation. The question is, should people be able to communicate those ideas, their perceptions to us? And we're punishing people for doing just that. And it's socially punishing them. And like, it's become... It's become okay to silence individuals in the name of helping the group. And I don't like that. I don't like it one bit. And we're all just supposed to, to be, be all right, sitting back and not saying what we see. That somehow... Our very utterances are a threat to our civilization. Truth doesn't fear speech. It never does. And the fact that the mainstream is afraid of speech right now, that is afraid that, that these, what they call whack jobs, will convince people to not do something, well... I think it speaks more to their credibility issue than it does to anything else. If the society, if the mainstream of society was credible, it wouldn't be afraid of speech. And that's the real issue. The credibility of our common thought and common speech is zero in the minds of a non-insignificant portion. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's been utilized to it's been utilized as a vehicle to push social change rather than communicate truth. So it's become a tool of manipulation rather than a tool of communication. And I think that's 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 the difference is that if they were sharing a perspective that was rock solid, that was just irrefutable, they wouldn't be afraid of everyone else speaking against it because it would come off as crazy. There have been crazy people on the side of the streets talking about vaccines hurting people for 40 years, right? And it's only now in the last 15-ish that it's gained traction. The question is why? Why did, has our government lost the credibility that it's lost? Why has our mainstream media lost the credibility that it's lost? So much so that it has to defend itself by silencing the critics. It's not a good place. The king shouldn't be silencing the critics. That's not where you want to be in your society. The king should be taking the criticism and improving. And that's that's the right answer. And I... I The more that Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube silence dissent and silence alternative opinions, right? Because everyone has their own opinion. Everyone's entitled to it. And if you silence that on your platform, all you're going to do is, is lend, you, you, you mini martyr that person. Every time you do it, you mini martyr them. And you push a group of people that may not have paid any attention to that idea over to them and then they go somewhere else and all that happens is our our society polarizes a little bit more and all of a sudden you have two spheres of reality that, that are discordant and the bottom line is neither one is right neither one is actuality it's just not it can't be that way the only way to discern that is is by a a central communication of all these perspectives, these perceptions, these differing perspectives. We want to do that. 
And we want a centralized platform to do that. And the more we censor one side's opinion, and it's not even a side, it's like non-mainstream thought, right? That's what's being censored right now. And I think it started with the purge of Alex Jones. You know what? Like him or hate him, pushing him out into his own little space has done nothing but stop the refutation of the theories that he puts forth. And now he is permanently in an echo chamber with no bleed over with anyone else. How does that help your cause? Don't, wh why are you afraid of what he's saying? Just let him say it. And if he's crazy, then explain why he's crazy. And that's the one thing the left has started to do. They're freaking cowards. They're afraid of debate. Look, it bothers me so much. I, I don't have any problem with anyone's comments about the craziest stuff in this YouTube channel because I'm not afraid of any of it. I know what I believe and I will refute what I think is wrong and I will spend the effort to refute it. This idea that you're not even going to try to refute something because it's beneath even being acknowledged. Well, that's how you breed counterculture movements that take over. You don't want to do that. Have the conversation. Don't make opinions off limits from, from normal conversation. You can't do that. And, uh, you know, to be fair, I was actually pretty surprised by the UK Supreme Court decision. They just affirmed that the freedom of speech entails the right to offend in a recent court case. That's a ray of hope, guys. That's a ray of sunshine. It really is. I was quite uplifted by that decision. So I think that's enough on this one. If you haven't had a chance to watch those two, you could probably pass. But the bottom line is, these these I think that we're going to get more of these horror movies. Maybe one will be that you can't hear anything, right? And, and in in the quiet place, being deaf was shown as being a benefit, which is, again, it's, it's, I mean, I get the disability aspect. That's not an issue. It's really the, the symbolic nature of it. It's the idea that not seeing, not speaking, and not hearing. So don't perceive, and then don't talk about it. And that's how you live. That's not a good thing. We don't want to be there in society. All right, guys. It's a short one. Thanks for listening. Uh, hit me up on Twitter at cfocus, uh, cronius.focus at gmail.com. Be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, I got a Discord server set up, so join that if you'd like to chat. So I, I do go, go through some ideas and kind of bounce them off you guys if you're around. So uh, if you want to get in Discord, that would be very helpful to me. All right, thanks again. Take care.